Live from Case at 12, the night beat starts right now. The 4th of July just weeks away, but firework vendors say it's not going to be the same this year. How the weather is affecting what you can buy and the cost that comes with that coming up. Also this weekend, yes, it is filled with celebrations. What to expect at San Antonio's first River Pride Parade and also a look at the Juneteenth celebration that kicked off today. But first, we begin with the latest out of Uvalde. Another hearing with the State House Committee has wrapped up. Uvalde City Police agreed to testify at today's hearing. And tonight, the New York Times is reporting that two Uvalde City Police officers told a sheriff's deputy that they passed up on a chance to shoot the gunman. The sheriff's deputy told the New York Times that one of those officers was armed with an AR-15 style rifle, but they didn't shoot because they said that children were playing in the background. On Capitol Hill, Senate negotiators are trying to work now on a bipartisan deal on gun reform. We got to settle these issues or else we're talking about jeopardizing our ability uh, to deal with legislation next week. Now, Senator John Cornyn has said the bill would not include raising the minimum requirement on assault style weapons. Key sticking issues include funding for state red flag laws and denying firearms to unmarried partners convicted of domestic violence. Now, Cornyn discussed that compromise proposal at the Texas GOP convention today where a crowd booed him. You've probably asked yourself how you would handle an active shooter situation. After recent events, law enforcement is preparing us for that. The Shirts Police Department is going to hold a class on that next week. It's going to explain how you can help someone who's suffering from a bullet wound. That session takes place June 25th from 9 to noon, which is next Saturday. If you want to go, you do have to register, and you could do that at bleedingcontrol.org, or you can call Shirts EMS at 210-619-1410. The number is right on your screen. We're also following the story on all of our social media pages, so we encourage you to follow us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. We also have several articles for you on ksat.com. And while you're there, check out our exclusive interview with Bear County Sheriff Javier Salazar. Since the shooting in Uvalde, he has made changes to hopefully prevent a tragedy like Uvalde from happening in Bear County. So we invite you to watch the full story on KSAT.com. Another developing story tonight. A lot of you don't like the heat or the dry conditions. You're not alone, but just imagine how bad it is for firework dealers, farmers, parents. Just today, Lavaca County became the first county to issue a burn ban to help prevent those fires. Now, Bear County is also under a burn ban. Last night, we showed you just how quickly flames spread across a field on the city's south side. Look at that. Fire officials say that it was started accidentally after sparks kicked up while someone was mowing. The dry conditions and the wind, yeah, that's what really helped to fan those flames. Now, when it comes to farming, yeah, the sun is hurting a crop famous in Fredericksburg. You see it right there. It's delicious, right? The Yensky family says the drought is the reason that they're struggling with their peach trees. This intense heat constantly, I think that's keeping the peaches small and they're not ripening either. Now, the Yensky family is now focusing on its retail store and they're hoping that that is going to help keep them afloat. You know what else the weather is affecting? Fireworks. Kamal County is banning certain fireworks. Bear County is also following suit. It's banning skyrockets with sticks and the missiles with fins. This is really tough for firework vendors, and they're hoping really for the best as they prepare for the 4th of July crowds. The night team's Patty Santos tells us that buyers will likely see higher prices. The warehouses are stacked, and next Friday, fireworks go on sale. Demand has been really high. I can't believe how much we've got going on right now and, and how much people are buying and placing orders. Those in the fireworks industry are cautiously optimistic that sales will be booming this 4th of July. And with inflation, along with the rising cost of fuel and shipping costs up, they can't afford a bad season. We've seen almost uh, 300 to 350 percent increase on freight 
uh, just for us to get those items here. Depending on where you buy, some customers might see a 15 to 30 percent increase in cost. But sellers say even in financially strained years, people splurged. They get groups of friends together, kind of pool their money, and they still want something to celebrate and something to look forward to. But fire officials are worried. We just know that during periods like this, the potential is much higher for fires to break out. Many counties like Kamal and Bear with burn bans are also banning the use of high-risk aerial fireworks like missiles with fins and skyrockets with sticks. This year, there's a big push to educate safe use. When people are done with their firework, is when a lot of those hazards are created. This year, instead, remember to soak used fireworks in a water bucket, drain them, and wrap the soaked trash in a plastic bag. And suppliers tell us that any specific firework that is banned in a county will not be sold at the stores in those counties. Here in Bear County, for example, a Getting caught with one of those uh, fireworks that you're not supposed to use could cost you a Class C misdemeanor, a fine up to uh, $500. And don't forget, it is illegal to use fireworks in city limits. Stephanie? Patty, thank you. Let's just keep adding to the list uh, of things that the heat is really bad for. The dry, hot weather, also bad for young kids. Just a reminder here, they can get too much heat exposure. If they're sweating excessively, have pale, clammy skin, or they're dizzy, they could be suffering from heat exhaustion. And if you notice that that's happening to a kid, just try to help them cool off because those symptoms could escalate into a heat stroke. Heat stroke can give kids a body temperature of 103 or higher. It can also make them vomit, stop sweating, and really causing them to just pass out. So if you see a kid with those symptoms, just call 911 right away. Don't waste time. So here's something that can help. The city of San Antonio and Bear County have cooling centers. And this weekend, you can visit several libraries and community centers to just, you know, chill out. We have that entire list for you on KSAT.com, all those locations. Now, meteorologist Justin Horn is tracking this continuation of 100 degree days. Justin, I think I lost count already. It's been more than a dozen. Yeah, we're on a record pace here, Stephanie. Yeah. 15 days so far this year, we've been at 100 or above. Today was not one of them. We stayed just below that mark, but the heat index was above 100, so still dangerous. And yes, this is a record pace. We're likely going to be setting some records here. May was a record setting month. June on pace to be one of the hottest on record. And you look at the highs today, 98 here in San Antonio. We did see some triple digits on the map, 101 in Pleasanton, 96 Corville, 100 in Del Rio. And I think as we head into the weekend, we have the potential to see more triple digits in the forecast. Of course, Father's Day weekend, 99 Saturday, 101 on Sunday. Uh, we'll see mostly sunny skies for Father's Day and Juneteenth coming up. So be careful if you're going to be out there. It will be hot. Stephanie. Muy caliente. Got it, Justin. Now, right now, police are searching for the final suspect in a robbery case. Officers in Kerrville are saying 19-year-old Logan Rene Rodriguez and another suspect stole cash from a pizza delivery driver this morning. That driver was held up at gunpoint. Police did catch one suspect, but they want you to help them find Rodriguez, who's the man seen on the screen. So if you know where he is, call 830-257-8181. Now for a look at your headlines and your night beat news flash. San Antonio Pets Alive now announcing a code red. They say that city shelters are full, so they need you to go and foster or at least adopt animals. A code red means that 25 or more dogs and puppies are on the animal care services list for possible euthanasia. San Antonio Pets Alive says that its facilities, yeah, they're also full. So if you'd like to foster, email foster at sanantoniopetsalive.org. You can also adopt a pet on the Animal Care Services website. And this Sunday, the adoption fee is going to be reduced to $40. San Antonio's mayor says the city needs a world-class symphony orchestra. As we told you yesterday, the current company has been dissolved. It's filing bankruptcy, but hold on, because there are actually talks to bring the music back. We decided we ought to let things kind of cool off a little bit, make sure we understand where they are with the bankruptcy and the going out of business. But we're going to have to work up to stand up a new organization to support the symphony. And so I imagine there'll be some ongoing talks over the next uh, several months about how we do that. All right, we'll follow up. Bear County Judge Nelson Wolf says that he spoke with the chairman of the Tobin Foundation, which supports the performing arts. 
Wolf says the chairman and others would provide input on how an organization would be structured to support an orchestra. The news of the current orchestra's dissolvement came as musicians went on strike to avoid benefits, be benefit and staff cuts. And that's a look at your Nightbeat News Flash. All right, so now let's go to a night beat update. Remember that baseball game that we told you about yesterday at Mission Stadium? Well, San Antonio's baseball team wore special maroon jerseys that were auctioned off to some generous fans, all of it to benefit Uvalde. And tonight, listen to this. We've learned $50,357 were raised at that event. The donations are going to go towards the Rob School Memorial Fund to help the victims. Very nice. Coming up, Pride Week starts today in San Antonio and the celebration. Yeah, that moves downtown tomorrow. What you can look forward to with the family friendly events this weekend. Also, it's been called America's second Independence Day. We're going to take you to one Juneteenth celebration that's already kicked off in San Antonio. Really exciting stuff. So much for you to do this weekend. We're going to talk about it next on the Night Week. Juneteenth is a Sunday, but you don't have to wait until then to celebrate because in San Antonio, that party started today. KSAT went to Comanche Park number two to show you the festivities that are happening now through the weekend. Check it out. Whether music, food, or games are your thing, there's something for everyone this weekend at Comanche Park number two. We have my amazing shrimp corn dog. It's the number one seller. Everybody's trying it today. Organizers of the 2022 Juneteenth Festival say the event is also a chance to learn history. On June 19th, 1865, Major General Gordon Granger announced the end of slavery in Galveston. That was years after the Emancipation Proclamation. This is a day to enjoy and to be informed. What I want is all people to come out feel comfortable know that this is a cultural day. That's why Juneteenth Commissioner Byron Miller says it's so important to celebrate the holiday. It honors the day freedom came to all African Americans. People understand what the 4th of July is. It's Independence Day. Well, the 19th of June is Independence Day. So just as we celebrate the 4th of July, we celebrate the 19th of June. The festival also celebrates local African-American businesses like Heart to Heart Goodies, which Joy Hart owns. Everybody's trying it today. And that famous grilled mac and cheese with shrimp. If you have never had it, you have got to come and try it. Look at this, guys. And yes, organizers thought ahead. We got Instapads, we got Band-Aids. With these hot temperatures, nurses will be at the event to make sure everyone stays nice and cool while celebrating the holiday. I need everybody to stay hydrated so go. they don't fall out. <laughs> yeah, the, the only question now is, are you going? The Juneteenth Festival continues today through 11 p.m., so you really have about 45 minutes left today. And it continues tomorrow through Sunday from 11 to 11 at Comanche Park Number 2 on Rigsby Avenue. And, yes, it is free for everyone to go. Also happening tomorrow, the city of San Antonio will host its first river parade for pride. And we got a sneak peek at some of the barges as crews put on the final touches. We have a, a couple of dance studios that will be performing on the floats. We have some drag queens on the floats. We have kind of a lot of balloons here and there on the floats. So lots of color, lots of excitement, a lot of music. Really will be a fun parade that will engage the crowd. The Bud Light Pride River Parade and Celebration kicks off tomorrow at La Villita from noon to 5. And there are two opportunities for you to check out the River Parade. It's going to start downtown at 4 o'clock, but the parade is then going to move to the Riverwalk Museum Reach at 7 o'clock. All of these events that we just told you about, they're all family friendly. We have a full list of Pride events at ksat.com slash things to do. Definitely something to check out. And you're also going to want to know what the temperatures are like. Now, right now, they're perfectly fine. 88 degrees right now. We have Sky 12 over Tower of the Americas. And you notice that you can see a lot of these lights here right now. And it just looks like a normal night in San Antonio because that's Saharan dust that we had for so many days. It's gone. Yeah, the haze got out of here, you know, and it'll be gone for a few days and then we'll probably see it come back 
as we get into the middle part of next week. We typically see bouts of it this time of year. Uh, we got to talk about rainfall. I mean, it has been so, so dry. Take a look at these numbers. The last time San Antonio International Airport saw a quarter of an inch of rain or more, 25 days ago. It was back on May 24th. And then the last time we've seen a half an inch of rain or more, 54 days ago, back on April 25th and 26th. The last time we saw an inch or more, 135 days ago. Just to give you some perspective, it has been so incredibly dry around here, and that's contributing to that drought situation. As we look forward in time, we're trying to find anywhere where we can find some you know, rain chances mixed in there somewhere. June 25th through July 1st, this is looking way out, still showing below average conditions when it comes to rainfall. Still not a great situation here across Texas as that high pressure really stays in control. Today was no different. We look at the time lapse here. We had a few clouds this morning, but a lot of sun this afternoon. That brought temperatures back up into the upper 90s. We did not hit 100 though today, 89 right now. South southeasterly winds at 16. We'll see some breezy winds throughout the night and into tomorrow. At this hour, we're still at 90 in Hondo, 87 in Uvalde, 88 Pleasanton, 88 New Braunfels, 83 right now in Kerrville. A little closer here around San Antonio, 88 Stinson, 91 still in Cashville. Not cooling down much there at all. Dew points. They stayed higher today than they have been the last couple of days. That's one of the reasons we didn't hit 100, but it's a trade off. More humidity means higher heat index values, and we saw that today. The heat index did jump up above 100, and I think we'll probably see that again tomorrow. The dew point trend for tomorrow, we'll start off with dew points in the 70s, so it'll be really sticky. It does fall off some in the afternoon, but not enough. Still think we have a heat index. Uh, from say noontime to 3 p.m. tomorrow, especially as we look at the big picture here across Texas. Not a lot going on. We noticed a few showers across East Texas and then some good monsoonal rains, Arizona into New Mexico. But we're here in the middle where there's just nothing, nothing at all. High pressure still really in the control of our, our weather here. And there was a weak frontal boundary, and that's what helped to spark some of those showers and storms down there across parts of Mississippi and Alabama. And a weak disturbance here across East Texas, which, by the way, moves a little closer tomorrow, but I don't think it generates much at all when we're talking about rainfall. Maybe, maybe a shower closer to the coast tomorrow. The big story here is this ridge of high pressure, which just does not want to move. You know, one thing we look for this time of year, too, for any sort of relief is the tropics. We do have a hurricane out there in the Pacific, Bloss and Tropical Storm Celia. These are moving away, though. And the one little system we've had here in the Caribbean, it just it's not developing and it's not throwing moisture in our direction. So we're not going to get any benefits from that either. The Hurricane Center is only giving this a 10 percent chance of development over the next few days. So we're not getting any relief from the tropics. And here's how the forecast for tomorrow looks. 83 at 10 o'clock, mostly sunny. We're up around 95 by 2 p.m., 96, 3 p.m. And then close to 100 again tomorrow. Just a very, very small chance of rain during the evening hours. And the extended forecast will go 101 on Sunday. If you're going to any of those outdoor events, be careful. The heat will be intense. 101 Monday and more triple digits much of next week. Seek the shade if you're out there. Good advice. Justin, thank yeah. you. All right, so I've got a question for you, Greg. Let's talk about College Nick. World Series. Could Texas do something that A&M couldn't? Yeah, that would be win in their first round game because A&M was involved in a slugfest with Oklahoma earlier in the day, but Texas tonight taking on Notre Dame. Remember, Notre Dame knocked out number one seed Tennessee, so we'll see what happens when we come back. Also, the Cowboys owner reacts to his coach being fined again. Coming up. Let the champagne flow. The Golden State Warriors are champs again in big board sports, but first. First round of the College World Series today and this afternoon, the Texas Longhorns taking on the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame. Horns down 2 nothing early, but start to charge. With runners on the corners, Eric Kennedy lays down the bunt. That scores Dylan Campbell to cut the Notre Dame lead in half. But Texas in real trouble in the fifth, down 5-1. to one. The Irish tack on one more run with his RBI single to right from Spencer Myers in a 6-1 to one Notre Dame. Bottom of the fifth now, Bernie's Doug Hodo the third blasts his pitch to left. That's an RBI single to score Campbell. Texas only four back now. Texas will score one more run on a wild pitch, but a one wasn't enough. Texas falls 7 to 3. We'll now face the Aggies on Sunday at 1 p.m. to see who moves on and who will go home. 
speaking of, the Fighting Texas Aggies are in the College World Series from the seven time in school history, looking for their first ever NCAA baseball championship. They would draw Oklahoma in the first round bracket and found themselves in a big hole early, down eight to nothing in the bottom of the second after giving up seven runs in the top half of the inning. But the Aggies bats finally come alive with two on. Jordan Thompson out of Bernie Champion is able to ring up this three run homer to left field. Finally gets the maroon and white on the board with two outs in the inning, make it eight to three. But in the top of the fourth, after walking the bases loaded, Jim Schlossnagel visits the mound for what appears to be a pitching change. But after a short conversation, he leaves Joe Minifee in, and that proves to be a huge mistake because on the very first pitch, Jackson Nicholas unloads on this fastball for a grand slam home run. And now the lead grows to 12 to three over AM. The final from Omaha, OU takes it 13 to eight. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. As we first told you on the night B last night, Cowboys coach Mike McCarthy has been fine again for hosting too physical of practice during organized team activities. That's after McCarthy canceled the final day of his mandatory minicamp because, as he said, they had gotten in the work they needed to do in the first two days, even though the second day was a trip to top golf as a team bonding event. McCarthy was fined $100,000 by the league, and the team will lose one day in OTAs next year. That comes after McCarthy was fined $50,000, the team an additional $100,000 last year for the same violation. According to the collective bargaining agreement, teams are not allowed in contact during off-season workouts. And get this, it was team owner Jerry Jones who broke the news, and it doesn't seem to really concern him. We got our coach fine. He got it in a little more than uh, uh, physically that uh, uh, than maybe we've uh, bargained for, but uh, uh, that's not the issue. Got a lot of good work in. Uh, we've got uh, really young players, uh, not only their draft picks, but also really more free agents, college free agents that have a chance to help us this year than I've seen in a long time. The Golden State Warriors are NBA champions for the fourth time in the last eight years as they were able to put away the Boston Celtics in game six last night. 103-90 saw it right here. Steph Curry was able to take home his first NBA Finals MVP award as the winner of the Bill Russell Trophy with 34 points included six three-pointers. One game after not scoring a single three-pointer in game five victory in San Francisco, breaking the string of 132 straight games. For former Spurs Steve Kerr, this is his ninth overall ring after grabbing five as a player, including two with the Spurs, for coaching his way to the title four times. Well, they're all unique. They're all special. Um, <clears throat> I think this one may have been the most unlikely just from the standpoint of where we've been the last couple of years. A lot of unknowns with injuries to Clay. And, um, you know, Draymond at the end of the year, Steph at the end of the year. Um, a lot of young guys, at kind of a new core uh, or, or a new group around our core, I should say. Uh, but um, it's really special. It certainly is. Congratulations to Steve and the rest of the Golden State Warriors. Who nails this 60-foot putt at the U.S. Open? Got it for you next. Here's a little interesting stat from the U.S. Open. 25 of the past 26 champions have been in the top six heading after round two. Roy McIlroy on 17 has a 12-foot downhill putt for a birdie, sinks it. And Roy is at 400 to the 15th now. Joel Damon footer, a 59-footer, if you will, for a birdie. And look at this. Oh, oh, it hits the pin and it falls in somehow to move Damon to 500 to share the lead back to 17 for Colin Morikawa's birdie putt. That moves him to 400 as we check the leaderboard to see where that ranks him. And as you can see, he is in uh, tied for the lead with Damon at 500. And you see Roy McIlroy one stroke back starting the third round and the race to the finish tomorrow in Brookline, Massachusetts. Now, we're getting an update also now. It turns out that Mike McCarthy is not the only coach fine in the state of Texas. So was Lovey Smith of the Houston Texas $50,000 for one-on-one -on -one contact drills between the linemen, offense versus defense. No-no during the offseason. Big no-no. Thank you. <laughs> you we'll be right back after this. We've seen a lot of this recently. You know, in tough times, the community comes together. And this one pulled together to cool some hot dogs. Not the food, like actual hot dogs dogs. Yeah. The weather caused thousands of customers across central Ohio to lose power this week. That included that dog shelter. The director put out a call for ice and yeah, the community showed up. The shelter got so much ice to circulate cool air and chill the kennel floors that the director actually had to ask people to stop with the donations, but still really, really sweet. You got to think about your, uh, your furry friends when it gets this hot out. All right. 
Well, that is it for the night feed. Don't forget that Good Morning San Antonio starts at 6. Have a very happy Father's Day.